Welcome to dealing with materials data. We are looking at the collection analysis and interpretation of data from material science and engineering. Uh, we are in the module on case studies and uh, this is a case study on calibration. Calibration is important for experimental measurements uh, using equipments and uh, what the equipment reads and what the actual value should be, there could be sometimes discrepancies. The very well known example that is also described in Berenson's textbook for example is uh, compass reading uh, in a ship to read directions. Because there are lots of magnetic materials in ship that affects the reading, in addition the magnetic north and the true north are slightly different. So, you will read something in your compass, but is that the north that you actually see or should you correct for the values that is given by the calibration. So, if you have a calibration curve when your magnet, uh, your compass reads something then you can add the correction and actually know the true value. So, uh, the idea is to use a material or condition where the result is known and uh, use the equipment to make the measurement because we already know what the result should be, we will know what the error that the equipment is giving and keep an information of this error so that we can correct it when we make a measurement on an unknown material or in a new situation. So, that is the basic idea behind calibration. So, we will uh, look at calibration in the context of uh, nano indentation. There are two papers uh, which I am going to use, I strongly recommend that you look up these papers. Uh, one is a old paper and a very well known paper from Oliver and Farr. Uh, this is for um, from uh, Journal of Materials Research, an improved technique for determining hardness and elastic modulus using load and displacement sensing indentation experiments. And uh, based on this, uh, but a slightly simplified one is uh, given in thin solid films, uh, uh, contact area function for Berkowitz nano indentation. And uh, this is uh, the fitting that I am going to do. Uh, if you re read Oliver Farr, you will see that actual function that you have to fit is very complicated. And uh, of course, one can do uh, take data and do that fitting also. But uh, to simplify things and to give you an idea of how the methodology works, I am going to do a very simple fitting. We, we are still going to do just Ax plus B kind of fitting, a linear fit. Uh, but it will tell you some of the ideas behind calibration and if you want a more complicated one, of course, you will be able to do because that is uh, fairly easy for you now knowing all the regression and linear models and fitting and things like that. So, it is easier to follow. So, what we are going to do is we are going to take some uh, formulae from here. Uh, but the fitting for uh, the uh, contact area versus uh, the uh, contact depth uh, will be done using a very simplified model that is described in this paper. Okay, so, the contact area of the indenter at peak load uh, that we want to get using measured depth and indenter shape function. So, um, the, the, the depth measurement is made and we know what the indenter is. Uh, but sometimes uh, the, the, the experiment is load versus depth. So, we will know the load, we will know the depth and from, from that is from where we are getting the depth. And from this uh, we have to st somehow get some parameter which will help us get this measurement because this is not directly measured. So, we want to make this a function of the contact depth. But that contact depth uh, area relationship depends on the indenter shape. We know the indenter shape, but the problem is um, the indenter gets blunted with use and or, or there are small changes in its shape and they can actually affect the contact area that you measure. So, we need to calibrate uh, the area that contact area that you get uh, for a given measured depth and a particular load versus the depth curve that you obtain. How do you do that is what is described and that is the calibration part. Like I said for calibration we always should have a material on which we know what the value should be and use that to back calculate what the, the equipment is actually reading and so we can. So, here is the um, relationship that connects the reduced modulus of a material to the slope of the depth load versus depth curve which is the S and the contact area is A. So, if you know the contact area and the slope of the curve you can actually get the reduced modulus. So, we take a material for which we know the reduced modulus 
uh, which is uh, few squats and uh, that is 69.6 .6 GPA. So, we are going to use this value and so we are going to estimate uh, A or root A. Okay. So, we have a measure of A, but we want to develop a calibration curve in such a way that by looking at the contact depth we will say what the area is, which means you need to relate A to contact depth. And the contact depth will be measured from the same experiment. So, it should involve the same uh, uh, values that you measure. And so, you can generate a large number of experiments in which you will measure this set C and A using a known material. And so, you can develop a relationship between A and H C and then use that to do the analysis on a new material. And the idea is to carry out a large number of experiment and generate this A versus H C data and you fit A to some function of HC and uh, so from then uh, an experimental measurement on a new material of this HC one can get the A and then you use it to get the mechanical properties of the material. Uh, Chicot et al give this root A is equal to A HC plus B. So, you have to determine the slope and the uh, intercept. So, that is what we are going to do. But if you see Oliver Farr's uh, um, paper you will see that it is a very complicated function. It goes as some uh, uh, with the known constant h c squared plus uh, some 8 unknown constants which go as h, h to the power half, h to the power 1 fourth, h to the power 1 eighth, etc. up to h to the power 1 28th. Okay. So, we are not going to do this very complicated fitting, we are going to use a very simple uh, fitting to do the analysis. So, this is how the load versus depth curve looks. So, this is the loading part and then it is held for a while and it is unloaded. This is the uh, peak load and the depth at peak load is this quantity and we are going to fit the unloading part to a straight line and we are going to fit slightly after this max we come a little bit down and take the data and do the uh, fitting. And the intercept actually gives uh, the, uh, the depth that you get from this uh, slope line. There is a relationship. Uh, so, we already know this. So, root A is root pi by 2 S by E R. So, pi by 4 S squared by E R squared is actually giving you the A because we know the E R and we can measure the slope uh, from the uh, this curve. So, this is basically the slope of this uh, red line you see here. So, you can get this quantity. So, A is known and the contact depth H is given by H max minus epsilon P max by S. Epsilon is 0.75, P max is the maximum load and the corresponding depth is H max. So, we know H max, we know P max, we know S, all these come from the data itself. So, by multiplying with this epsilon you can get H C. So, we have H C and A measured from the curves. So, we do it for all 36 plots and save the data as a CSV file and then do the analysis on the CSV file to get the calibration curve. So, let us do that um, as usual. Uh, let us open R and start doing this analysis. So, the first one that we want to do uh, is that uh, um, we will take one of the data and do this uh, fitting exercise just to give you an idea of what is happening. Okay, so, we know the E r, we know the epsilon and we read the data and in this quartz area calibration uh, directory there are 36 data sets. First three lines are skipped because if you open the data set you will see that uh, um, the first three Okay, so, it gives some data of when this measurement was made and number of points etc. So, we are going to skip these three steps and then uh, the lines and then we are going to read the header and then we are going to read the data. right? So, that is what it does, uh, skip three lines and then read the next one as header and then the rest is data and uh, PM is nothing but maximum of the load and uh, it is micronewton. So, we are going to multiply by 10 power uh, minus 6 and uh, N at which point the maximum load is measured, the corresponding depth we want. So, which max actually gives the line number. So, if you take that line number and measure the depth that is the H max and that is in nanometers. So, we are multiplying by 1 e power minus 9. And then uh, you can go to the data and see somewhere about 440 to 500 is where we are doing the fitting and that is because 
that is the point. So, let us go back to this curve. So, the 440th to 500th data point is somewhere here and this is what we are using to do the fitting. So, with the max we come slightly below and uh, so I am just doing it to, to show how it works. Actually you have to take uh, uh, 5 percent or 10 percent off from the P max and from then there you have to choose. Of course, when you um, do this analysis yourself you can also try those things. Now, but in this case I am going to take 440 to 500 to be slightly below the H max and that is where we are taking the data and we are going to do a linear fit. And the slope is actually our S and we know that uh, uh, HC is H max minus HS which is epsilon into PM by S. This is the P max and this is the slope that you read from the curve. So, we now and AC is uh, pi S squared by 4 ER squared. So, that also we know and so you can do that. And in this case we are also going to plot this uh, points uh, and then we are going to also fit the line that we are doing in red which will basically give you the curve that you see in this uh, presentation. right? So, this is the curve that we got. So, this is the data and this is the max and then it comes down and then we are choosing some points here and then we are fitting a straight line, we are taking the S and we can calculate all the values. So, you have to now do this for all the 36 data points right and that is what is shown in this. Um, so, I am I'm not going to uh, do redo this here, uh, but this shows you that uh, you can take data set 1 and do this. And we also generate a data frame which has 36 rows and 2 columns and the 2 columns are AC and HC and we are going to do this for every data set we store the data. Then we do it for data set 2 and that is the second line of the data. We do it for data set 3 that is the third line of the data and so on and so forth. So, you do it for all 36 of them, Okay, it is the same code uh, just that there is no plotting and you can do it for all 36. Once you do all 36, we are going to write the data as a CSV file. This is something that we have not done so far. You can also like read CSV, you can use write CSV and write the data files. So, now that we have the data, we are going to do the other analysis. So, that is the analysis uh, that we will do. Let us do this. So, what is analysis? So, we read the data and uh, once you read the data, uh, then you say that okay, the um, the, the second column is A and the third column is H that is because if you look at the data, the data also has the line numbers. So, let us open the data, okay. so the data when it is written it also has the line number. So, I want to skip the line number part and it is AC and HC, so that is what we are reading. So, we plot this H versus A and we take square root of A and we fit it to a straight line. Square root of A is some MH plus C and so we plot this data and then we plot also the uh, line. So, let us just do this part first, right. So, this is the data that we are getting. And now let us do the uh, square root A and plot and then plot the um, square root A versus H and then the fitting that we have achieved. So, this gives you the fitting and if you look at uh, m dollar coefficients, so this is basically telling you that if you can measure a contact depth 5.393204 times contact depth plus this intercept some 8.8 .8 and 10 power minus 8 is basically the uh, contact area that you measure. So, now that you have this relationship for any material you just need to measure this quantity and you can get the contact area and you can see that the fit is good. Of course, there are other ways of uh, checking that the fit is good. So, let us plot the residuals and you can see that residual is equally distributed and randomly distributed. So, it, the error is normally distributed. There is another way to check that it indeed is normally distributed 
uh, which is a QQ norm curve and you can see that this curve is also sort of straight line indicating that we have um, a good fitting and, and all the error is normally distributed. So, it is basically noise and so we have done the uh, calibration. So, to summarize calibration is very important whenever you use any equipment it has to be frequently calibrated this we have discussed when we discussed error and ways of avoiding systematic errors. And so, uh, many cases uh, calibration uh, leads to either uh, calibration table or uh, fitting so that you will get a calibration curve. Here is an example where we actually fitted it to get a calibration curve and uh, this curve actually connected the contact area to uh, contact depth and contact depth is what is measured and we have to get the contact area. In order to do this calibration we used a material of known um, modulus and using that uh, we actually calculated the calibration curves themselves and I have given the complete process of doing it as well as the data set will be available for you to experiment with. Uh, so, we are going to uh, stop at this point, I will share this data set, I uh, recommend that you go through this and the example of the compass reading and how to correct for it that is given in Berenson that data is also available. Uh, online. So, you can look it up or you can take it from Berenson's book and try to do the uh, calibration curve yourself. So, to understand it uh, better. So, with this uh, we will conclude this case study and uh, uh, we will look at two more case studies uh, design of experiments and uh, hypothesis testing in the sessions to come. Thank you.